The next stop was Bethlehem, which is only a short drive from Jerusalem. The picture I had in my mind of Bethlehem is of a small agricultural town where you could find inns and barns and caves and mangers, but instead it's a hilly suburb in the desert of the Palestinian-controlled West Bank. We are here to see the Church of the Nativity, which is built over the spot claimed to be the birthplace of Jesus. This location was identified in 325 AD by Helena, the mother of Emperor Constantine. It's the oldest major church in the Holy Land. The church is entered through a very low door called the Door of Humility. We are told that in the past, the low door also served to keep out camels and horses. Overhead is a complex array of sanctuary or altar lights, which go back to the Jewish tradition. The ceiling exposes wooden rafters that were donated by King Edward IV of England in the mid-1400s. High on the wall is a medieval golden mosaic. These once covered the walls, but now only this one remains. In the front is an iconostasis, which is a wall including icons and religious paintings, separating the nave from the sanctuary. At the side of the altar, a crush of people squeeze through a small door into a grotto below the altar. There we see a marble floor with a hole surrounded by a 14-point silver star that is claimed to be the exact spot where Jesus was born. Across from it is the grotto of the manger that marks the spot where the manger would have been. I wondered why they didn't have a nativity scene rather than a hole in the floor. We emerged from the grotto and exited the side door to make our way down the hill to our waiting bus. We leave Bethlehem and are soon heading eastward into a less densely populated area of the West Bank. Our destination is the Dead Sea and we know we're getting close as we pass signs telling us how far we are below sea level. The Dead Sea is the lowest elevation on Earth at 430 meters at 1,412 feet below sea level and falling at a rate of 3 feet a year. The Dead Sea is a landlocked body of water that has one of the highest concentrations of salt in the world. It is over nine times saltier than the ocean, which is too harsh for most plants and animal life, thus the name. We put on our swimsuits and head for the water. Only a small shallow portion of the sea is cordoned off for our use, but that's more than we need. Some people were covered in mud, and we learned that the salty mud is said to be beneficial to your skin and temporarily relieve some skin diseases such as psoriasis. Following the directions we were given, we entered carefully and proceeded to float on our backs. Getting Dead Sea water in your eyes or mouth or an open wound is a very painful and unpleasant experience. It's a strange feeling to be unable to sink even if you want to. Also, the water feels like baby oil. It coats your skin and doesn't bead or evaporate. I found it impossible to roll over on my stomach and stand up while I was floating. I had to get into shallow water and put my feet on the ground first. Floating in the Dead Sea is something everyone should do once, but no one needs to do a second time. The next part of the excursion was a two-hour bus ride northward on Route 90 through the West Bank. As we crossed this arid, sparsely populated land, our Jewish tour guide spoke at length about the relationship with the Palestinians. He noted that over 700,000 Palestinians have left the country and given up their land rights. Palestine, including Gaza and the West Bank, was formed in 1967, and many who live there are Egyptians and people from other countries. The West Bank has three administrative classifications. The cream-colored area are fully administered by Palestinians. The pink area are jointly administered, 
and the white areas are under Israeli control with new Jewish settlements shown in purple. There are 165 disconnected areas that cover the West Bank like a patchwork quilt. The result is that the Palestinians don't really control Palestine, and with all the new Jewish settlements, you can see why there's conflict. Continuing northward, the land becomes less arid and there is more cultivation and different crops. To the east is a fertile valley belonging to Jordan. To the north is the Sea of Galilee. The next stop is Yardinet, which was set up by the Israelis in 1981 as the almost baptismal site of Jesus. The actual site is Kesar el Yamud, which is in Palestinian territory. In front are plaques in many languages showing the passage in the Bible where the baptism of Jesus is described. In the back, past the giant gift shop, you find the Jordan River and a baptismal area. The final stop of the day is Nazareth and the Church of the Annunciation and Church of St. Joseph. This is Israeli territory and there is much new construction. The Church of the Annunciation was built over the location where the angel Gabriel visited the Virgin Mary and told her about the Immaculate Conception. Like other holy places in Israel, this site was identified by St. Helena in the 4th century, and there's been numerous churches on this site. This latest church was built in 1969. What is interesting about this church is the modern design and the inclusion of artwork from countries around the world. Smaller compositions of Mary are displayed outside in a sheltered area, and several large pictures are inside the church, including offerings from France, Canada, Japan, and the USA. Outside we pass a well-worn statue of Joseph and walk a short distance to the more modest Church of St. Joseph. The church is built over caves that were reportedly the carpenter shop of Joseph. This grotto under the church has altars and stairways leading down to lower levels that are closed off. There were pictures in the grotto when I found one to be especially intriguing. It shows Joseph as an old man being comforted by a younger Mary and Jesus. Could it have been that Joseph was much older than Mary and married her knowing that being pregnant and unmarried, she would have been stoned to death by the people of the town? Leaving the church, we return to Haifa to rejoin our cruise ship and continue our journey.